All right. I've got less hair, more coffee, and more stories. So let's get started. In the last few weeks, I've covered the first four of the original six Olympians, Zeus and Hera, Hades and Demeter. Today, I'm going to cover Poseidon and Hestia. The last two of those first six Olympians, the children of Cronus, the Gen 1 Olympians, sort of the boomer generation of Greek gods, if you will. And after I'm done with these two, then I'll move on to the next generation of gods, probably starting with Ares and Hephaestus. But the thing is, the reason I've kind of saved these two for the last of the original generation is they're tough. Now, it's not that they're minor gods or goddesses. I'm talking about Poseidon, god of the seas, and Hestia, goddess of hearth and home. They're actually super important gods and goddesses to, uh, to the ancient Greeks. Because if you look at ancient Greece on a map, it is an archipelago. It is a peninsula surrounded by a cluster of islands, an archipelago. Seagoing life was super important to the ancient Greeks. So obviously, their god of the seas was important to them. But it seems to me that most of the stories with Poseidon end up having him as a side character or even a supporting character in another god story. But I'll come back to him at the end. I'm going to start out with Hestia because, man, when it comes to Hestia, I have got almost nothing. <laughs> the thing about Hestia is, as far as stories go, she's super boring. I used to have a story I would tell about Hestia. And then after about five years of telling that story as a Hestia story, I realized I had the wrong goddess. I was telling a different goddess a story and giving it to Hestia. Hestia is just boring. And I have a theory about why Hestia is so boring in Greek myths. Because all their other gods and goddesses and heroes and demigods, they're all super exciting. They're all super dramatic. Tons of stuff going on. There's revenge, there's punishment, there's pettiness, there's cheating, there's squabbling, there's all sorts of drama. But I think when it really comes down to it, nobody wants home to be exciting. You want drama to be something that you can leave the house and go and experience and then come, come home and get away from. You want drama to be something that you can turn on on Netflix and watch and then turn it off when you're done with the drama. You really don't want your house itself to be the drama. So, I think for the ancient Greeks, part of the reason why Hestia, this most important of goddesses, was so boring is because she is the goddess of the home. You want somebody who is calm. You want somebody who is stable. You do not want some crazy guy or lady in charge of your home life. So, Hestia, goddess of the home, kind of boring. I have one Hestia story, and it's lame. Later on, we'll get to the story of Dionysus, the Greek god of wine and partying. And I think it tells you something about the ancient Greeks, that they specifically had a god of wine and partying. But that aside, he was a latecomer to Mount Olympus. He was a demigod, born on Earth, who achieved godhood and came up to Mount Olympus. Problem was, when he finally arrived on Olympus, all the thrones in the throne room, taken. There were 12 thrones, there were 12 Olympians, and there was no room for him. And so Hestia made a power move. She gave up her throne. She, like, got up, went over to the fireplace, the hearth, pulled up a stool, and sat there. And Dionysus took her throne. Now, blatant sexism and storytelling aside, that is just kind of a boring story. And again, I think it reflects the fact that the Greeks just kind of wanted home to be boring. Adventures and excitement were for other people's stories outside the house. Now that story is super lame. I'm sorry. It's the only Hesha story I got. So I'll give you the story that I used to think was a Hestia story, and turns out it wasn't. It's actually about the goddess Eos. And Eos was the mother of the four winds. 
And she would, with the dawn, let loose a soft morning breeze. And she's a gentle, kind goddess. And one morning, she looked down and she saw a beautiful, handsome, magnificent young man. And she fell in love with him. And she fell so deeply in love with him, she wanted to spend the rest of her life with him. But when she brought this up to her king, Zeus... Zeus said, no, no, this will not work out. You are an immortal. You can't die. He is, an, he is a mortal. He will die. He'll grow old. He'll grow weak. He'll die. No, it does not pay for gods to mix with mortals. Now, he says that and he looks around the throne room and he sees everybody staring at him. And I'm like, really? Really? You're going to say... No mixing with gods and mortals. You, Zeus. Meanwhile, over in a corner, one of his sons goes, <coughs> Cow! <coughs> and so Zeus, you know, gets a little bashful. And <coughs> yes, well, I mean, it doesn't pay to mix with mortals long term. Hang around with him for a while. Have him be your friend and then, you know, ditch him. That's what some gods do. I mean, not me. Much. But Eos, this isn't what she wanted. She loved this man and she wanted to be with him forever. So she begged Zeus, please, please, will you give him eternal life so I can be with him forever? And Zeus, who's already bored and kind of embarrassed by this whole conversation, the way people are kind of looking at him and muttering about, you know, the whole God's not spending time with mortals thing. And the way his wife Hera was giving him some side eye, says, fine, fine. I grant him eternal life. You may bring him up to Olympus to live with you. And she does. And they spend years together. And he sings and he laughs and he jokes with her and she loves him deeply. But the years pass and she notices um, he's not as strong as he used to be. He's not as youthful as he used to be. His beautiful singing voice the voice same voice that he would recite poetry to and it, it's getting sort of weak and squeaky and it takes her a few years to figure out what's going on and then she realizes it zeus is not the most thoughtful of gods in case you haven't noticed and zeus he had given this man eternal life what he hadn't given the man was eternal youth so he was living forever but he's getting older and older and older and he shriveled up smaller and smaller and his voice got squeakier and squeakier and chirpier and chirpier and poor eo she still loved him but like what could she do with him anymore she couldn't talk with him he was so weak and frail and he was actually getting tinier and tinier so she go, took this lovely padded box and she set him inside the box and she set it in a corner of her chambers as he slowly shriveled and shrank until he eventually became a grasshopper. And she closed the lid on the box and kept the grasshopper in a corner of her room. And that became a warning to all the other gods and goddesses, mortal and immortal, not meant to be together, at least not long term. And again, it's not a Hestia story. I oopsed and I thought it was. Taught it as a Hestia story for years. But now that brings us to Poseidon. Poseidon, the god of the seas. This guy. Now, very often, usually what I'll do is I'll go on the internet and I'll find some good pictures of the Greek gods or goddesses. But I don't need one. Because instead of this picture from the internet, I have this picture instead. This picture comes to you courtesy of the girl, my daughter, age six. Here's Poseidon, powerful, strong. Look at those massive chest muscles he's got on display there. And he's even holding his trident in his hand. His trident, the three-tooth, the three-pointed spear that was made for him, for him by the three Cyclopes. That's Poseidon. Yep, the girl drew this picture for me. And she also wrote a note from Poseidon to me. Because 
after I believe it was episode two of Telltale Tuesdays when I oopsed and I forgot to mention the twin god and goddess Apollo and Artemis. She watched that video and she immediately had to draw this picture and write this note. It says, you forgot the twins. So you and your oldest daughter need to snuggle extra. Which kind of bring up a, brings up a good point about Poseidon. A lot of times when Poseidon shows up, it's because he's the one dropping the hammer for the other gods and goddesses. Zeus is good for a quick lightning bolt. Um, Artemis is good for a quick killing of an entire family with arrows. We'll get back to that in a minute. But if it's going to be an entire kingdom punished, usually Poseidon is your guy. And normally the punishments aren't to snuggle with your daughter for an extra amount of time, which, you know, as far as punishments go, pretty darn easy to deal with. No, usually it's, oh, all the ships from your city will sink. Um, or monsters will come and destroy your seacoast town until you give up your daughter. Poseidon, usually the guy who's taking care of that sort of rough, biv- rough business for the rest of the Olympians. He's volatile. He's got a bad temper. The trident, it can raise up tidal waves. It can split the earth open. It can flatten mountains. His other name, his sort of nickname among the Greeks was the Earth Shaker because he had a bad reputation of starting earthquakes when he was grumpy. But he had hobbies. Um, He lived in a beautiful palace under the sea, which had belonged to the titan Nereus. But after the God War, Poseidon shows up and Nereus goes, Yep, all right, you're in charge. Take the palace. Oh, here's Amphitrite, my daughter. She can be one of your wives. And Nereus swam away and spent his time elsewhere, and Poseidon got the palace. And Poseidon loved animals. He had a hobby. He liked to make animals. He made all sorts of animals, uh, and the giraffe was one of his favorites. The bull was a symbol that showed up for his repeated, uh, one of his symbols repeatedly. Later on, when we get to the story of the Minotaur, Poseidon will show up in that story. But one of his favorite animals was the horse, because he created the horse. And if you picture the profile of a horse, the arch of the neck and the snout bending down, if you picture the profile of the horse, and you also picture the profile of an ocean wave curling up and over and rolling forward, well, to the Greeks, the waves were what Poseidon had made the horses out of. So he's a big fan of horses. What he also was a fan of was having a city that belonged to him. Because very often, Greek cities would be dedicated to a particular god or goddess. And Poseidon didn't really have one dedicated to him. And there was a beautiful new city being built. And he thought, this one should be mine. I want this one. It's got a great location. It's got this nice flat rocky outcropping above it, giving a view down below from the Acropolis. Beautiful place. And so he thought this should be his city, should be named after him. Uh, The name Poseidonus had a good ring to it, to him. Ah, but here's the deal. One of the other Olympians had her eye on the city as well. This is actually one of my favorite Olympians, the goddess Athena, who we'll come to later. Among other things, she is a goddess of wisdom and of war. But both Poseidon and Athena called dibs on the city. And you can't have a city dedicated to two gods. It's not going to work. They're too territorial. It'll get ugly. And trust me, this gets ugly later. But Poseidon and Athena decided to settle this like grown-ups. They each would present the city with a gift. And whoever gave the best gift to the city, as judged by the citizens of the city, that city would belong to that god or goddess. It would be dedicated to them. And Poseidon... He had this in the bag, and he knew it. They all gathered up on a rocky outcropping above the city, and he took his trident, and he struck the ground with it, and up bubbled a stream, a sparkling cold stream of water, just beautiful. And it flowed on down the hill, and people were impressed. Uh, But Athena, she set aside her spear, She set aside her shield, and out of her 
purse, she pulled a seed. And she dug into the dirt with her hand, put the seed in the ground, patted it. And then she struck the ground with the butt of her spear and a tree grew up. And Poseidon just shook his head and said, oh, niece, really? A tree. That's what you got, a plant. And she said, wait, wait, wait. Let the citizens of the town judge us and we will see who they choose. So the people came up and they saw this beautiful, sparkling, ice cold stream and they dipped their cups into it and they each took a drink and <coughs> spit it out. Because, oh, oh, it's horrible. Unlike my coffee. Where was I? Ah, yes, gifts. So they spit out this water and they're just gagging on it. And Poseidon's looking like, what? What's wrong with this? What's, I've given you water. Every town needs water. Every city needs water. It is a foundation of life on earth. And the people of the town, very carefully, very politely, addressed him. It's like, um, yes, Lord of the Seas, this is water. And a town does need water, but a town needs fresh water. And you accidentally created... A river of salt water. We can't drink it and we can't farm our fields with it. We can't really do anything with it. Meanwhile, the tree had been growing. And as he looked closer, it was a brand new tree that none of them had ever seen before. It was, in fact, an olive tree. And what they learned from the tree was, hey, the tree on a hot day gave them shade. On a cold night, it could be harvested for wood. And because it was an olive tree, it not only gave them food to eat, it gave them oil to cook with. This was a really good gift. And Athena won hands down. And because she won hands down, this unnamed city, still a small town but growing, would be named after her. And that is how the city of Athens got its name. It is dedicated to the goddess Athena, who, as I said, was a goddess of wisdom. And Athens became known for their science, and for their art and knowledge. And that's that. And I think I'm going to leave it there for tonight. And next week, as I said, we'll do the brothers, Ares and Hephaestus. And I think we'll do the mighty Aphrodite at the same time. And next week, I think I'll give a bonus episode on the Roman versions of the Greek gods. But for now... Have a good night.